good morning to those of you who are on the uh, West Coast and good afternoon to the, on the East Coast and thanks for joining. Um, today, uh, we're gonna be covering uh, the first part in our Denwell series um, for brewing technology. Uh, my name is Chris Webster. I've been with Gusmer Enterprises now for about three years and I come with a background in the academic side of the biomedical field as well as background in brewing. <clears throat> a brief overview of how this webinar is gonna play out today. We're gonna to first go over a brief introduction of Gusmer and Denwell. Then we're gonna get into inline aeration oxygenation overview, paying particular focus to yeast physiology. We'll then move on to some general tips and recommendations for the modern brewer. Um, from there, we'll get into system options available through Denwell. And then we will um, end with a Q&A um, if you have any questions, please type them in the Q&A box above. Um, our digital marketing manager, Peter Stenport, will be monitoring your, um, your questions uh, and we will address those at the end. So thank you, Peter, for doing that. At the conclusion of this webinar, if you have additional questions or looking for more information on products or services, please feel free to navigate yourself to gusmerenterprises.com find the rep locator button and type in your city and state as well as your industry that you're interested in and you'll be connected with your region's technical representative. So a brief, brief background about Gusmer Enterprises. So Gusmer was founded in uh, 1918 and since 1924 their mission has been to provide service with knowledge. It's a family-run company with management and ownership currently in their third generation. We specialize in fermentation and filtration products, as well as uh, services for the food, beverage, biotech, and pharmaceutical industries. We have a multitude of manufactured and resell products, and we work with numerous vendors such as Denwell to provide innovative products to our customer base. Inside Gusmer, we have 15 direct technical sales representatives, for which I'm one of them, uh, four product managers, and three application specialists. Um, in addition, we have 16 R&D scientists. Gusmer Enterprises is well represented from the east to the west coast of the United States. We have manufacturing facilities in Fresno, California, as well as Wapaka, Wisconsin, and retail stores in Napa and Sonoma, as well as warehousing in um, Mountainside, New Jersey. Denwell, um, was founded in 1997. It's a privately owned independent company with headquarters in the Czech Republic. Um, Denwell has primarily been focused on the uh, brewing industry for numerous years. However, they became, they begun to uh, get some acclaim in several other markets, uh, such as pharmaceutical, chemical, energy industries. Um, this has been going on for several decades. In today's topic, we're really gonna focus on uh, these more standardized skid mounted systems. However, Denwell does have uh, adept uh, engineers in their, in, their, in their team to optimize customized uh, uh, engineering plans for any individual brewing need. So we can work with you on any of those um, uh, systems that are outside of the, of the norm. Today's uh, webinar series is going to be discussing um, inline gas injection for word aeration. Um, but through this webinar series that we're going to be carrying, the five-part series, we're going to get into water deaeration in later step, steps, uh, as well as dosing equipment, glass pasteurization, as well as CIP skids and systems. We'll discuss when those webinars will be taking place at the end of the webinar today. <clears throat> so really, what's the physiological importance of proper aeration and oxygenation. At the end of the day, it's all about the yeast. Um, proper aeration is gonna promote yeast health and ensure adequate reproduction of those yeast cells. And we're gonna get into a little bit of that biology later on. Um, proper aeration is gonna to lead to better attenuation by those yeasts. They're gonna consume more sugars. This is especially true in high gravity brewing and even more relevant today in the, in the hard seltzer industries. With improper aeration, we could lead to some off characters and negative flavor attributes such as acetaldehyde and medicinal diketones. 
However, some of the modern uh, yeast manufacturers, brewers yeast manufacturers, I should say, are recommending that you use their yeast at high doses of dissolved oxygen. And they recommend this to promote these much more characteristic um, attributes from things like these hazy uh, IPAs and, and whatnot. Um, and probably just as important is with, uh, with wort aeration is that you want to make sure that you have a quick and robust fermentation from the get-go. And this is going to help you outcompete those unwanted spoilage organisms that may find their way into your fermentation vessel. So here's our buddy, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Um, this is a budding yeast, which means it multiplies by budding and forming two daughter cells. Um, the, uh, over on the right here, you can see a scanning electron micrograph of various uh, Saccharomyces cells, and you can see some of them are budding, forming a new daughter cell, and others are have bud scars from daughter cells that they've created in the past. It's really important to take note of this is that this is a self-limiting process. Uh, budding yeast can only bud so many times before it finds its eventual decline. And a key point here is that each time that it buds, that that daughter cell is actually taking some very important equivalents from that mother cell. And we're gonna to touch on that right now. We've all heard that oxygen is required to produce monounsaturated fatty acids and sterols in a yeast fermentation. And there are numerous ways as to why that happens, but these are limiting steps. Oxygen is required for the production of some of these. And if we were to look at the yeast cell and look at all the membranes inside that yeast cell that make, whether it's surrounding the organelles or making up the plasma membrane, 50%, over 50% of those fatty acids that make up those membranes are composed of monounsaturated fatty acids and to a lesser extent, polyunsaturated fatty acids. Those polyunsaturated fatty acids are those unsaturated um, lipids or fatty acids, excuse me, are produced only under aerobic conditions. And so in the typical yeast membrane, you're gonna have uh, carbon lengths of fatty acids anywhere from 16 to 18 carbons long. Now associated with these membranes, and this is a really important point, are sterols. Sterols are also only produced under aerobic conditions. And together, <clears throat> excuse me, together the sterols and the fatty acids intertwine and work together to allow for more membrane fluidity. And this allows the yeast cell to adjust to ever-changing conditions, whether it's temperature or other environmental stressors. Sterols in particular are absolutely required for the yeast cell to tolerate high levels of ethanol. Okay, so as the yeast cell, so if we were to look back over here at this diagram on the, on the left here, we see this, this picture of a yeast cell. We see the outside cell wall, and inside we see all these different organelles. Every line that's inside that yeast cell is where you'll find a fatty acid and a sterile located. So they're really abundant in a yeast cell. Um, and since unsaturated fatty acids and sterols make up such an important component of the membranes, um, they are only required under, they're only produced under aerobic conditions. So as a fermentation moves forward, after those first couple hours, oxygen is already consumed. And so any further divisions from that point is gonna be pulling from the pool of those sterols and those unsaturated fatty acids from the mother cell. With each successive division, those yeast cells become less and less able to deal with those stressors that are occurring in real time in that fermentation vessel. Proper aeration up front whether in the propagation system and in your, in your proper wort aeration, is gonna allow for a healthy and more robust fermentation to carry all the way through your beer making process. So how does one go about aerating or oxygenating at the production level? Well, I think that we need to first uh, define a couple terms. Well, aeration is simply the use of atmospheric air to increase dissolved oxygen in cold sweet wort. <clears throat> Now, atmospheric oxygen is about 21% oxygen. Under most brewery systems, uh, most brewers are really only able to uh, get about eight parts per million all the way up to maybe 14 parts per million 
uh, dissolved oxygen in their wort using standard aeration. Oxygenation, however, is the use of pure oxygen, be it from a tank, a compressed tank, or from a um, generator, to take those levels of dissolved oxygen well above the theoretical max capable by aerating alone. So how does one go about doing this? Well, there's really three main methods. There's the spray, spray ball method, and the spray ball is, uh, you know, you'll find those inside each of your fermenters. And basically, this is a form of splashing and agitation. The other way of going about oxygenating at the production level or aerating at the production level is the use of a sintered stone. We use that in line or directly in the fermentation vessel. And lastly, in the more modern approach is to use a Venturi type aeration and oxygenation system. And because this is the makeup of the Denwell systems, I'm going to focus a little bit more on how this works. The Venturi type injector works by the Bernoulli effect. Okay, if you were to look over at your picture on the uh, left here, there's a small Bernoulli cell in the very bottom. And we'll get into the definition of the Bernoulli cell. But effectively, if you take a liquid and it's constant pressure and a constant velocity or flow rate, and you pass it through a condensing location, in this case, P2 on this picture, as it passes into that condenser, the velocity of that liquid increases. The but at the same time as that velocity increases, the net pressure on that fluid decreases at that P2 location. As that liquid passes through that condensed region and into that expanding region, the velocity decreases again due to increasing diameter of that tubing, um, but the pressure increases. Okay, and so the Denwell injection systems take advantage of this. And, and by the way, take a step back. That, that inverse relationship between velocity and pressure is known as the Bernoulli effect. Okay, so as a, as a liquid passes through these condensers and the uh, pressures start to climb again, the velocity has to come down. So that inverse relationship is really what defines the Bernoulli effect. And this is, can be defined similarly through this equation at the top of the page. Um, Denwell has taken advantage of this Bernoulli effect in their gas injection systems. And you can see as the, in this middle picture here, as the flow of liquid moves through that condensed region, the velocity is increasing, the pressure is decreasing. And at that point, right prior to the expansion ring, as gas is injected, that pressure begins to increase due to the Bernoulli effect. Velocity decreases and you get full micronization of your gas bubbles in the liquid suspension and full um, saturation of that liquid with that gas. And here's a little example of how simple these systems really are, but how effective they can be. So if we were to kind of go back to our inline aeration oxygenation overview, I have this listed in effectiveness of the application. Um, the spray ball um, is likely uh, the one that most people have learned about when they started home brewing. This is the, the common approach the splashing and agitation approach. This is very low to almost no investment. In fact, most of the fermenters, uh, fermentation vessels that are in your brewery probably have a spray ball attached. And this is where you just pump your work through that spray ball and let it collect as much oxygen as it can on the way down. Um, these are pretty inefficient in time, uh, as well as the amount of dissolved oxygen they can pick up, typically around three to six parts per million max. Probably most common in in the modern brewery is the sintered stone. Um, these are fairly low investment. And you can see a picture here on the, on the, the right. Fairly low investment. Um, however, their efficiency is incredibly dependent on many factors. One would be the flow of the wort, the cool sweet wort. Uh, one would be the amount of pressure and the flow rate of the gas being applied through the sintered stone. But the other more important point about sintered stones that aren't really taken into consideration is they're incredibly prone to plugging with um, beer stone. And so as you continue to use these from day one to day 30, your effectiveness at um, aeration is likely decreasing. And that's because of this beer stone formation. And because of this porosity, they're nearly impossible to properly uh, clean in place. The Venturi style in, in, or the Venturi type injector, however, um, are highly efficient systems. Um, as you can see, they take advantage of that Bernoulli effect 
there's not a whole lot to them. There's not a lot of working parts. You basically got your tube and then you've got your, your gas injection location. Because of this, it makes them incredibly easy to CIP. And so these are becoming the favored direction for the modern craft brewer. <clears throat> so some of the application tips and suggestions that we can make are really consistent temperature control. Until you can have consistent temperature control, your beer is not gonna be consistent. Um, and that is eventually the true goal. If we were to look over here on the, uh, the graph on the right, we see the relationship between temperature and the amount of oxygen that can be soluble in that wort. Um, this takes advantage of the Henry Law, um, which basically is stating that as temperature decreases, oxygen solubility into that liquid increases. And similarly, as you increase top pressure or increase pressure on that system, you could drive even more dissolved oxygen into the system. The Denwell injectors take full advantage of this Henry's Law by delivering uh, pressurized gases into that suspension. Another important uh, application point and really a general tip is for, for the brewer verification of DO and cold sweet work. Uh, this is often overlooked. Um, it's not consistently done in a lot of craft breweries. And so you're, many are frequently under, under aerating their work or under oxygenating their work. Um, implementation of a DO measure can allow you to be more consistent in your production, allow for your, for your beer to be produced um, more accurately and more consistently from day one to day 365. Um, with the Denwell systems, options are available. To, for DO monitoring. And in fact, in our systems, one can, in these systems, one can use DO as a parameter. So you can tell the system what dissolved oxygen you want it to target and it will focus on that dissolved oxygen. This makes it a highly attractive uh, system for growing and uh, larger brewers. Um, with that, I'd like to turn it over to Nate Sites. Um, Nate Sietz is our technical sales manager at Gusmer, and he's also the brewing product specialist. And Nate, I'll let you take it from here. Excellent. Thank you, Chris. Good afternoon, everyone. So I'm going to spend the next uh, few minutes here talking about the system options available uh, from Denmo. Um, so when we're talking about word aeration, oxygenation, um, the systems are set up in, in different, a couple different ways. Uh, aeration and oxygenation, you're going to have uh, different pore sizes in the Venturi nozzle itself. So there's um, going to be some uh, variability in that if you're, you know, trying to use both types of gas injection on the same system. So these systems need to be spec'd if you're going to use aeration or oxygenation. Um, you can also do, and what uh, many brewers are doing today, is a combo unit. So having uh, two different Venturi nozzles on the system, uh, and this really allows for you know, maximum flexibility um, and being able to aerate uh, different you know, wort and uh, other type of beverages styles based on the, the gravity and what you're trying to achieve. Ned, Chris? Okay, so we're going to break it down into the uh, three categories that uh, Denwall offers. Um, manual units, so these are completely uh, manual controlled uh, butterfly valves. Um, these come with a uh, chart based on uh, your, your workflow volume as well as your uh, airflow volume to calculate uh, the PPM um, desired. Um, there's also semi-automated units that uh, rely on ratio controls and has a touchscreen panel, um, much more uh, precise in hitting your target number. And then there's fully automatic um, units that utilize a uh, inline DO instrument um, for full you know, ratio controlled feedback. So with that, we'll start with the manual unit on the next slide. There we go. 
Uh, so the manual unit's a very uh, small, compact unit, um, easy to uh, fit in uh, just about anywhere in the brew house. Um, so Genwell uses 304 stainless steel to construct their, their frames and their piping. Um, as you can see, the unit here, uh, fully manual uh, with all uh, butterfly valves in a uh, precision uh, dial valve uh, for the uh, airflow um, volume. Um, there's also a uh, sintered air filter uh, coming in and a sintered uh, filter for your steam. So this uh, system is, you know, completely steam sterilizable. Um, and down below that you can also see the bypass loop. So you can um, CIP the venturi nozzle on both sides of, of the nozzle. Uh, these systems come in a, a couple different features. As I mentioned, uh, aeration uh, and oxygenation are, are separate units. Um, the differences being uh, the type of or the size of venturi in the system itself. Um, the standalone oxygenation system is a little bit cheaper because it doesn't have a um, sintered uh, sterile air filter on it. Um, we're assuming that your oxygen is that you're going to be using is already sterile. So there's no uh, reason to need an additional filter. And then the uh, combo oxygenation aeration system. So there's a number of uh, pre-engineered set sizes available from DINWO, uh, ranging from DIN 25 up to DIN 50. Uh, and for the manual systems, the max uh, flow rate maxes out at around 100 um, hectoliters an hour. Um, and with this too, uh, as Chris mentioned earlier, in addition to our uh, pre-engineered standard systems, Denwall can also uh, customize a manual system to fit your needs. Next, we'll talk about the semi-auto units. So this is an example of a wall-mounted semi-auto unit. Um, uh, both the uh, semi-auto and the fully auto uh, come in wall mounted or skid mounted and I'll show you a, a version of the skid mounted next. So similar to uh, the manual systems, uh, they come in, you know, either aeration or oxygenation setup or uh, what is popular now to do the combo um, setup. Um, the way the semi-auto versions work, there's a ratio control valve on the um, wort flow line. And then as you can see in the top, the, this picture here, there's a ratio control valve on the aeration line. Um, so in the uh, PLC control cabinet to the right of the picture here, uh, the user would input their uh, desired PPM levels and the uh, Denwall software would um, regulate the flow um, of air based on the, the flow of the uh, wart speed. So this is a pretty uh, precise um, way. Um, and as you uh, increase in, in size in your brewery and um, especially increase uh, in gravity of the uh, styles of uh, beers or alternative beverages you're making, um, a higher degree of precision is, is needed. Next, we'll move on to the uh, automatic units. Um, so this is a uh, skid mounted system. So like the, the semi-auto, the auto comes in both skid mounted and wall mounted. Um, same with the uh, manual and semi-auto too. You can get this in uh, aeration or oxygenation versions or uh, the ever popular uh, combo version. Where this, where the fully auto differs from the uh, semi-auto is the fully auto has a um, inline dissolved oxygen meter uh, with a local display. So in this picture here, the local display is in the upper right-hand corner. Uh, and that's on the outlet of the uh, word aeration oxygenation line. So that uh, outlet or that inline um, DO probe on the outlet, that provides the ratio feedback to the system, um, which in turn is controlled by uh, uh, precision controlled air actuated valves on the wart line, as well as the uh, aeration lines. 
Um, so in you know, magnitudes of precision compared to the semi-ion unit, uh, it's quite a bit more precise, um, which you know gives it a uh, all-around you know better value added if you're uh, doing you know many different styles. So with both the fully auto and the semi-auto uh, in the PLC controls themselves, you can up input a, a number of different recipes with varying degree of uh, aeration or oxygenation uh, regimes. And then of course, you know, the, the PLC is a standalone PLC, but it can also be tied into a uh, superior control system in your brewery as well. And with that, uh, we'll open it up to questions. So maybe we'll just give it a minute here, Nate. Uh, currently there's no questions in the Q and A. So we'll allow everyone, if they do have questions, you can put them into the uh, Q and A at the bottom there. You know, Chris, you, you touched on it uh, pretty good at the uh, beginning, the importance of aeration, oxygenation and, and yeast health. And, you know, one thing I want to emphasize here is the, the importance in higher gravity uh, beers or higher gravity alternative beverages, such as hard seltzer. Um, you know, there's a big degree of importance uh, put into the, the yeast uh, variety and in addition to nutrients, uh, but a, you know, commonly overlooked aspect in all the um, degrees of go, that goes into the fermentation kinetics is the aeration oxygenation, you know, with high gravity um, seltzer fermentations, you need to have, you know, a pretty high level of, of oxygenation and as part of your regime. Yeah, I'm sure you do as well. And, and, but, you know, majority of the questions I get especially in the hard seltzer arena is, okay, I, I need to know more about yeast. I need to know more about filtration. I need to know more about nutrients. And no one ever says, hey, I need to know a little bit more about oxygenation or aeration for that matter. It's, it's, one, of those, it's one of those aspects that's often overlooked, but it's so critical to the yeast health, especially if you want clean, crisp, refreshing product. And uh, it's, it's, it can't be overstated how, uh, how important it is. And I think more people, at least more breweries and and seltzer producers really need to to um, think about their systems that they're currently using and, and try to improve those yeah great point well provides a great option any questions come in in the chat box peter uh no it doesn't look like there are any questions today Dean. okay well with that we can wrap it up all right well uh thank you again for those of you joining us for this webinar um the remainder uh, of the webinar series for this Denwell Technology Systems will be occurring on June 22nd. We'll be touching on uh, cold side inline gas injection, carbonation and nitrogenation. Um, on Tuesday, July 13th, we'll go into carbo blending and dosing systems and everything you know need to know for hard seltzer finishing. On Tuesday, July 27th, we'll uh, jump into the various um, options for water deaeration and why you needed this yesterday. And lastly, we'll finish up the, um, the webinar series on August 10th and discuss uh, CIP and how this is going to make your life easier. Now, again, if you've had any questions about some of the products or uh, any of the topics that we discussed today or other products that we can uh, assist your uh, manufacturing in, um, please find your way to www.gusmerenterprises.com click on that find a rep button and then type in your city state and the industry you're interested in and you will be connected with your region's technical sales representative. Um, with that, um, I'd like to thank you all for uh, joining us today. It was really exciting and we look forward to seeing you uh, at the next uh, Denwell webinar um, installment. Thanks again. Thank you everyone.